Cancelled cameos, deleted droids and headless humanoids are just some of the things that didn't make the final cut of Rogue One. In this video I'm going to break down the movie's deleted scenes and characters and examine the reshoots and rumours and what they meant for the film. There are also some really interesting rejected concepts which I'll be looking at too. Of course there are spoilers ahead for Rogue One and anything Star Wars related so be aware of that. And if you're not ready make sure you see the movie first and check out my spoiler free review by tapping up here. When Industrial Light and Magic's Chief Creative Officer John Knoll pitched his original Rogue One concept, he put forward a lineup of characters that was vastly different to the final team we see in the movie. The original title was going to be Destroyer of Worlds, and as well as humans, the Rebel crew included two alien characters called Lunak and Senna. Lunak and Senna went through multiple versions of design during development, with Senna initially depicted as a Chewbacca-style alien, and Lunak as a kind of sidekick who could skitter into an air duct almost like a little thief. The aliens were later replaced with the duo Chirrut Imwe and Baze Malbus, although later designs of Senna appear to be the basis for the mercenary Moroff, who fights with Saw Gerrera's partisans. The other original Rogue One team members were Jin Erso, K2SO, Dre Nevis, Rhea Tala and Jerris Kestel. Also during this early concept period, Krennic was actually an Imperial spy who had infiltrated the team, sending back his intelligence to an Imperial officer called Willix Kree. As well as changing many original characters, the concept for Rogue One changed from an ensemble action movie to one with more emphasis on Jin as a central character. However, it seems that by the final cut of the movie, Jin's role and screen time were purred back somewhat. The trailers point to these cuts with various exchanges between Jin, General Draven and Mon Mothma deleted from the final movie, including Mon Mothma's line, On your own from the age of 15, reckless, aggressive and undisciplined. And there are also some snippets of snarky dialogue from the trailers that were cut from the final film, one of which was Jin's line, I rebel. The words proved unpopular with some fans who felt the dialogue was a bit too on the nose, and it's been rumoured that one objective of the reshoots was to make Jin's character less antagonistic. Key to Jin's partially missing backstory is what appear to be some significant deleted scenes with Saw Gerrera. In the celebration sizzle reel, there's a deleted scene where Jin and Saw are outside. Notice that Saw is bald at this point, like he is at the start of the movie when he rescues the young Jin, rather than grey-haired as he is when Jin meets him in his cave in the final movie, which suggests that this cutscene is set a few years before the main timeline of Rogue One. We know that Saw abandoned Jin when she was 16 as he feared for her safety among his fellow partisans, so could this shot be showing that very moment when he left her, which they talk about in the movie. The first trailer also shows a deleted scene with a bald Saw Gerrera and features a speech he gives to Jin. What will you do when they catch you? What will you do if they break you? If you continue to fight, what will you become? And it seems like these words that we never hear in the final movie and which may imply that Jin was fighting alongside Saw may have given further background to why Saw abandoned Jin when she was a teenager. Remember that Saw Gerrera was considered an extremist with the Rebel Alliance cutting ties with him, so perhaps the idea for cutting out this part of Jin's backstory was to make her a more sympathetic character. Rumours have also surfaced of a deleted scene between Saw Gerrera and Darth Vader. The rumour claims there is a scene where Vader attacks Saw, badly injuring the rebel fighter. And it's also claimed that there is another cutscene where Vader smashes a Jedi temple. Both these claims are currently unsubstantiated, but if true they hint towards a darker and even more violent Vader than the one we already saw in Rogue One. There are some Darth Vader scenes from the trailers though that were definitely cut from the final movie. There's a cool shot of Vader looking on at a red schematic of possibly the Death Star plans, another foreboding reflection of his image set against a fiery red planet or star, and there's a cut scene where Krennic tells Vader the power we are dealing with here is immeasurable. What we see in the background of these scenes, as well as an officially released promo still, suggests that before the reshoots, Vader might also have appeared on the Death Star in addition to Mustafar. By the way, there are also rumours of a deleted scene where Darth Vader hunted down three of the main characters and killed them, and I wonder whether this shot of a TIE fighter appearing at the top of the antenna tower could have been Vader arriving to take out Jin, Cassian and Krennic personally. The scenes on Scarif are certainly a part of the movie where we can see numerous scenes were cut from the trailers, which suggests that there was some significant reworking of the story in the third act. For example, the transmission of the data tapes to the Rebel Alliance appears to have been reworked substantially. The first trailer has Jin and her crew running through the Citadel carrying the data tapes, and in another shot they are dodging enemy fire from stormtroopers and ATACTs on the beach while carrying the tapes. Remember, in the final cut of the movie, K2SO dies inside the Citadel while Jin and Cassian are 
recovering the tape. But in this shot from the celebration sizzle, it looks like Alan Tudyk, who played K2SO, is running along the beach in the background in his mocap suit. So it could be that originally the snarky droid didn't die, or at least not in the way we saw in the movie. These cutscenes could also suggest that the team was going to physically deliver the plans initially rather than transmit them via a satellite link. Or perhaps more likely, the transmission antenna was located in a different position to the citadel where they recover the tapes in the final movie, which meant that the team had to run across the beach to reach the tower. By the way, notice how Jin and Cassian have their normal clothes on at this point rather than their imperial disguises, which seems to add to the theory that much of the assault on Scarif was reworked during reshoots. Other deleted scenes from the Scarif battle include stormtroopers marching through the water, Krennic's badass scene where he lands and walks through the water trailing his white cloak behind him, and Vistan the space monkey scene where he's machine gunning from the inside of a rebel ship seems to have been cut back as well. Another casualty of the reshoots was astromech imperial droid C2B5, who served in the Citadel vault performing maintenance tasks. C2B5, also dubbed as Evil R2-D2 by fans when the character was officially announced, didn't get any significant screen time, but had a blink and you'll miss it cameo scooting behind some stormtroopers in the Citadel. I wonder if they ever had in mind with this character to play on how the Death Star plans were entrusted to R2-D2, reversing that or mirroring it in some way. Although all the characters die at the end of Rogue One, in the very first screenplay they actually didn't. In fact, director Gareth Edwards says he kept expecting to be asked to put in a scene where Jin and Cassian survive and are living on another planet. However, Edwards added that Lucasfilm and Disney understood that because the characters weren't in A New Hope, it made sense that they shouldn't survive Rogue One. As well as providing the motion capture and voice for K2SO, Alan Tudyk also filmed a small live-action cameo as an Imperial pilot. The pilot would have been credited as played by Ray Neely, who is the actor's character in the web series Con Man. However, the scene was cut, which Tudyk has joked is entirely appropriate for his character in Con Man. By the way, K2SO also had a joke cut from the trailers, where he goes up to Jin and declares, The captain says you are a friend. I will not kill you. There's an intriguing deleted cameo in Rogue One by model and actress Eunice Illumide, who filmed a scene on Jeddah as a rebellion leader where she runs through a bar chased by a tank and stormtroopers. In the scene, she's wearing what she's described as a really outlandish costume and a sort of mushroom on her head, and there's been speculation that her character might have been Ahsoka Tano, who's featured in both the animated Star Wars TV shows The Clone Wars and Rebels. Han Solo directors Phil Lord and Chris Miller almost made it into Rogue One with cameos and scenes that were meant to be part of the Jedi sequence. However, due to timing conflicts, they weren't able to attend the shoot. Of course, Star Wars fans can't forget Leia's famous nerf herder insult to Han Solo in The Empire Strikes Back, and it looks like the original script for Rogue One planned to introduce actual nerf herders for the first time in the Star Wars movies. Sadly, they didn't make it to the big screen, but they were likely going to appear on Edu. Concept art for the movie also reveals numerous deleted characters and locations from Rogue One. On Jeddah, there were stormtroopers that rode these incredibly tall camel-like animals. And Krennic even had an office set up on Jeddah in early concept art. Also, there's some omitted backstory and characters that would have explained what fugitive surgeon Cornelius Everzan was doing on Jeddah. The headless humanoid Kazin Bog was hinted at in the trailers, but we didn't get to see the strange-looking servants called the Decraniated, who Everzan created during his various operations on Jeddah. Saw Gerrera also had a medical droid called G21B7, which he used to help keep himself alive and there were Imperial droids scurrying around the core tower in the Scarif Citadel that would have caused problems for Jin trying to access the data tapes. And there was going to be a mountain planet where the inner Death Star dish was hidden. The dish would have risen out of a lake on the planet to attach itself to the Death Star, but the whole concept was scrapped for being too complicated. And there was a bunch of other stuff from the trailers that didn't make it in as well. Take a look at some of it here, and if you have any theories on what it means, let me know below. On Jeddah, there are a group of rebel pilots who've been taken prisoner, and are being marched along by stormtroopers. And in another shot, Jin hands something to the little girl who she later saves during the partisan attack on the stormtroopers. There's a scene with Jin sitting in the front of Cassian's ship, a hologram of the Death Star that pops up at the rebel base on Yavin 4, and finally we never got to see this very cool iconic shot of Jin and her Imperial combat suit. So guys, what do you think about the deleted scenes and reshoots? Are there any deleted characters you'd like to have been in the movie? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you get all my new videos as soon as they're ready. In the meantime, you can check out more of my videos right here. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Yippee-ki-yay, movie lovers!